just last week we returned from a 17 days Europe trip where we explored three countries mainly in Central Europe and also took day trips to three other smaller countries. Needless to say, a lot of research and planning had gone into making this trip what it eventually turned out to be. An epic trip where we had the absolute best time exploring some beautiful European countries. And probably one of the best decisions we made while planning out this entire trip was to rent a car and do a road trip. And of course, once we thought of renting a car, a lot of questions popped up in our mind like how easy or difficult would it be to drive in Europe? Uh, would it be feasible cost-wise to rent a car? What helped me find answers to most of these questions was obviously reading tons of blogs, watching God knows how many YouTube videos and spending a lot of my time on TripAdvisor forums. So I thought of putting all the information that I have gathered during my research in one place that will help anybody who wants to plan a Europe road trip. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Everything that you need to know about renting and driving a car in Europe. So I have divided this video into three sections. The first section covers all the aspects related to car booking that is before you actually land in Europe and start your trip like from where should you book your car, what are the documents that would be required for you to book a car, what kind of car you, you should book and a lot of other questions. So now you have successfully rented a car and have landed in Europe. So the second section covers everything about picking up your car in Europe and most importantly driving around in Europe. And in the third section, I'm going to tell you some important tips that we picked up during our driving experience in Europe. Like how do you fill petrol and pay for it? How do you pay at parking lots? And also how we were able to save more than 10,000 rupees on rental cars. A very important thing to keep in mind is that when you're driving in Europe, the steering wheel is on the left side of the car while you're driving on the right hand side of the road, which is basically the complete opposite of the way we drive here in India. So it can get a little confusing and it might take some time for you to get used to it. It's not difficult, it's just that it'll take some time getting used to it. So starting with the first and the most basic question, why should you rent a car in Europe? Now the most obvious and also the correct answer is it gives you the flexibility and the freedom to go wherever and whenever you want. You don't have to be dependent on buses or the train schedule to take you to the place that you want to visit. It also depends on your itinerary and the countries and the places within those countries that you want to visit. For example, Austria was our first destination in Europe where we spent around 6 days but rented a car only for 2 days. Now our plan was to spend around 4 days exploring the cities of Salzburg and Vienna and then spend a couple of days exploring the countryside of Austria. So for the 4 days that we spent exploring Salzburg and Vienna and also moving between these two cities, we relied completely on the different modes of public transport like trams, metros, buses, uh, railways. We ended up using all of these and trust me, it was so convenient and easy that it took us just 5 minutes to understand how the entire thing works. Now apart from exploring the different cities, we also wanted to explore the countryside of Austria for a couple of days and that's the reason we rented a car only for these two days. Now you can definitely visit some of the countryside locations using buses and trains but then there are some places where public transportation won't take you so that's where having a car comes handy. Now the second destination of our trip was Croatia where we spent close to 9 days and we rented a car the moment we landed at the Dubrovnik airport in Croatia. The reason was pretty simple, the railway network in Croatia is not that great as compared to the other European countries. So if you want to move from city A to city B, you have to take a bus. And even though the bus uh, network is pretty great, but it's still, it's, it's, it's basically time consuming. So that's the reason we decided to rent a car for our entire duration of stay in Croatia. Plus Croatia shares border with a lot of smaller countries like Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Slovenia so we wanted to take trips to all of these countries as well and that's the reason we rented a car in Croatia. If we had plans to only visit 
let's say Vienna and Salzburg in Austria and visit only a few cities in Croatia we would not have rented a car and just use the public transportation system that is available there but like I told you because of the itinerary and because of the places that we had in mind to cover we thought renting a car would be the best option to explore all of these places at our own pace you have decided that you want to rent a car but where or how do you book a rental car so the very first time we drove internationally was way back in 2019 when we had done a cross country road trip in new zealand and the second time was obviously in europe and in both of these trips we have used rentalcars.com so i'm only going to talk about how to book a car using rentalcar.com which is basically an aggregator website uh, where you will find various uh, car companies such as uh, Europa Car Enterprise, Budget, Avis, all of these companies, they put out their cars uh, out there for you to rent. So now I'll show you how do you book a car using rentalcar.com. Obviously, there are many other aggregator websites available as well, but we have had great experience with this. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So booking a car using rentalcars.com is pretty straightforward. Once you open the website on your browser, you just need to enter the pickup location, date and time. So for example, in our case, our location was Dubrovnik Airport in Croatia and we'll select a random pickup date and let's say the pickup time is 1 p.m. We'll select a random drop off date for our car and the time we'll keep it at 1 p.m. The way these rental car companies calculate the cost is basis the 24 hours time period. So let's say I pick up a car today at 1 p.m. and if I'm dropping off the car day after tomorrow at 1 p.m. or before 1 p.m. I'll be charged for two days. But in case if I drop off the car at let's say 2 p.m. instead of 1 p.m. I will be charged additional cost for that one hour. You can choose to drop off the car at the same location which is Dubrovnik Airport or I can also drop off the car at a different location. So in our case, we uh, dropped off the car at uh, Ljubljana Airport in Slovenia. So that's what I'm going to select. Now keep in mind that when you are dropping off a car at a different location, whether it's in the same country or a different location in a different country, you will have to pay an additional cost which is known as the one-way rental fee. I'll talk more about it when, in the, when I'm talking about the cost component of booking a car. One thing that I would definitely recommend is instead of going with a manual car, try getting an automatic transmission car, big car because it will just make your life so much more simpler over there. Another important thing to note is the fuel policy, which is called like for like, which basically means that when you'll pick up the car, the fuel tank of the car will be full. So when you are returning the car, you also have to return the car at a full tank. Now, before you make the final payment and book the car, make sure that you go through the rental terms and conditions, because that will tell you what all is included in the price that you're paying, what all is excluded, what are some additional charges that you might have to pay when you're picking up the car and in general some other uh, policies that they have. Now let's just quickly talk about the different cost components of booking a rental car. The very first is obviously the base price of the car that you book. The second one uh, which is an optional uh, <coughs> cost is the full protection plan or the insurance for your car. Uh, I would highly recommend that whenever you're renting a car outside of India, make sure you buy an insurance plan so that you are fully protected in case if you get into an accident or there's a scratch on your car or God forbid if the car gets stolen, you're fully protected and you don't have to pay a huge amount. The second one that you have to be uh, mindful of is the one-way drop fee. So basically when you're picking the car at one location but dropping off the car at another location, whether it's another location in a different country or even another location in the same country you will have to pay a one-way rental fee which depends on the car rental company that you are going ahead with the third one is the border crossing fee uh, now when you are in when you're driving around in europe and you're planning to visit different countries uh, let's say you're going to some european union countries and you're also going to some countries that are not part of the european union you will have to pay a certain border crossing fee that is uh, defined by the uh, rental company that you choose. Uh, so for example, we had to pay around 50 euro uh, for, uh, uh, for crossing borders at Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Slovenia. The fourth cost component comes into picture when you are visiting a country like Croatia because when you are in Croatia, you 
would be visiting a lot of different uh, islands and uh, you can also take your car along with you on a ferry so you have to pay certain uh, small amount for taking your car on these ferries and uh, when we were picking up the car at uh, the Dubrovnik airport uh, that person asked us if we had plans of taking our car in the ferry and if yes then we would have to pay an amount of 17 euro for the same and honestly at that point we had not finalized uh, our island uh, trip so we told so we told him that we aren't sure and he told us uh, to just drop them an email and let them know and then we can always pay later on uh, we did drop we did drop them an email but we didn't hear anything back from them and we ended up taking the car with us on a ferry without actually paying that 17 euros but yeah that's another cost uh, component that you should keep in mind one more important thing to note is in case if there is an additional driver apart from the main driver who is also going to drive the car then you will need to pay some small amount uh, for that additional person as well so in our case it was just my husband driving the car so we did not have to pay this amount but in case uh, if two of you are going and both of you uh, are planning to drive the car then you will have to pay certain small fee so the last component which is also the fully refundable cost component is the security deposit before you are handed over the keys at the car pickup location they will block a certain refundable amount on your credit card this could be anywhere between 300 to 500 to 1000 euros it depends on the number of days that you have booked the car for and also the location now this amount is fully refundable and especially if you have taken a full protection plan and uh, something goes wrong or you you've met with an accident and uh, the rental company they end up deducting amount from your uh, refundable deposit you will be refunded the entire amount by rentalcars.com because of the protection plan now at the end of this video i will tell you how much exactly did it cost us to rent a car during our 17 days europe trip and also obviously how, how did we manage to save more than 10000 rupees just a week before our trip started now coming to the next question what are the documents that are required for you to rent a car so the very first and the most important document that you would need is obviously your driving license or the DL and uh, make sure that your DL is in English. If not, you'll have to get it translated. Otherwise, it won't be accepted. The second important document is your credit card. Now, when you're picking up the car at the rental car location, the company will block a certain refundable deposit amount on your card. So make sure you have a card that has enough limit in it and also it has to be in the name of the main driver so for example in our case my husband was going to drive the car so my card was not acceptable to them it the credit card had to be in his name so your driving license and your credit card the, uh, these are the two most important things without which you will not be able to pick your car in europe now the third document which is not mandatory at least as of october of 2022 in uh, the six countries that we visited and uh, but it's a good to have document is idp or international driving permit which basically is a document that gives you the right to drive in any international location outside of india nobody asked for our idp uh, during the entire uh, time that we drove around in europe but uh, when we were researching about it we got to know that it's a good to have document and in case if you are stopped anywhere by the police then they might ask for it and even in our rental car agreement, uh, they had mentioned that uh, for all non-European drivers, having an IDP is recommended. So uh, just for our peace of mind, we decided to apply for it and get one before uh, leaving for Europe. The process uh, for applying for an IDP is pretty simple in India. You have to apply it uh, to the RTO that has issued your driving license. So for example, in our case, we stay in Bangalore, but my husband's driving license uh, was issued by a non-Bangalore RTO. So we first had to get his uh, DL converted to a Bangalore uh, uh, DL and then we were able to apply for an IDP. You can either apply directly on the Parivahan website or you can also go through an agent which just, which just makes the process simpler and also you get it you, you get your IDP in within like a week's time but it's obviously going to cost you uh, some money if you go through an agent and the IDP is valid for one year so it's basically up to you whether you want to take an IDP with you or not but uh, I would highly recommend that just for your peace of mind and just to avoid any hassle or problems uh, when you are out there just carry an IDP with you 
So that brings us to the end of section 1 and you have successfully rented a car for your Europe trip. Now in the second section we are going to talk about actually picking up your car and driving it in Europe. So once you reach the pickup location, you need to tell them your booking ID. They will then ask you for your driving license, they will take a Xerox of it and then they will also ask you for your credit card and like I mentioned the credit card has to be in the main driver's name. They will tell you what is the deposit amount that they are charging on your credit card and that it's completely refundable. So you do that transaction and then they will give you a form to fill wherein you have to fill very basic information about yourself like your name, your address, your contact details and so on. Now before they hand over the keys to you, they will also tell you some important information about your car. The most important of which is what are the damages that already exist in the car. So they will give you a list of the damages and defects in the car that they are aware about. For example, there is a small scratch on the left hand side of the car or there is a big dent on the bonnet of the car and so on. So when you see the car for the very first time at the pickup location, the very first thing that you need to and you should do is inspect the car for all these damages. And the best way to do it is to go around the car and create a video of the entire car specifically focusing on all the damages or dents that you are seeing and in case if you see anything that is in addition to the things that they have already mentioned make sure you tell them before you leave the location with the car and because you have also taken a video of the car in case if there is any issue or problem later on you will have it as a proof that the damages were already existing in the car before you took them before you took the car out another very important thing to do before you leave the location with the car is to make sure you are comfortable with the different functionalities of the car. So make sure you know how to open the petrol tank or how to operate the windshield wiper both the front and the back wipers, how to uh, switch on the different lights of the car. And last but not the least make sure you check that the car papers are in order because if you are stopped anywhere the very first thing that the police would check is your car paper. And also when you are crossing borders, when you are going from one country to the other country, then at the border control points of the two countries, apart from your passport, the one thing they are definitely going to ask for is the car rental papers. So make sure that the car rental papers are in order before you leave the pickup location. Now coming to the most important part of this video, which is the real driving experience in Europe. And I won't talk about it because I did not drive but it was my husband who drove in Europe so I'm going to hand it over to him and he'll tell you how was his experience driving around the different countries in Europe. And in the third and last section I'm going to tell you some important tips that we picked up during our driving experience in Europe like how do you fill petrol and pay for it, how do you pay at parking lots and also how did we manage to save more than 10,000 rupees on rental cars just one week before our trip started.